Hello, welcome to a CNA's Opus. My name is Rich. I'm a certified nursing assistant. Uh, right now I'm looking at myo-inositol and this is one of the optical isomers of inositol. Well, there's actually nine uh, different isomer, optical isomers of inositol and if we look at this particular one, myo-inositol, which is uh, pertinent to the conversation, is that the, uh, the, um, there's an alcohol group off of each one of the carbons and with myo-inositol it's going to be um, if you're looking at it the carbons you're counting in uh, a counterclockwise direction so we're going one two three four five six and here we have the alcohol group when it's colored in like that that means it's coming out of the page and then we have a hydrogen that I don't show that's going into the page and this alcohol group, this is coming out of the page. And then there's a hydrogen coming, going into the page. So they're going in opposite directions right there. Um, so you see, you can see uh, carbon four right here. Uh, the alcohol group is going into the page. So that means the hydrogen is going to be coming out of the page on, uh, on this particular um, uh, optical um, isomer of inositol. And again, there's there's nine uh, known ones. Um, so down here we have uh, this would be like the phospholipid bilayer right here, and this right here would be your fatty acids or long chain carboxylic acids. They're not actually carboxylic acids once they bind to the glycerol molecule. They become um, uh, acyl groups uh, because they lose. Well, I'll show you in a second, but they lose their alcohol group and they're left with a carbon uh, double bonded to an, an oxygen. So they become an acyl group once they bind to the glycerol molecule. And you, in order to be a phospholipid, uh, it, it has to have two fatty, at least two fatty acids coming off of it and uh, a phosphate group right here. So I show a phosphate group over here. I, I did some of it already because I kind of, uh, I don't know, I was messing around with it. But anyway, um, this in here is the, the phosphorus atom, uh, double bonded to the oxygen. And then there's a single bond to the oxygen down here, which gathers a, 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 a negative uh, net charge. It gathered by ionic means. So it pulled this negative charge from somewhere else. Um, but you'll notice this isn't part of it. So just let me scratch that out. That isn't part of it. But there's two alcohol groups on in the phosphate group. You can see right here. There's two of them. So if you look back over here, we have the phosphate group right here. There's one alcohol group right here. So there's an alcohol group on the glycerol molecule up here. So say this is the glycerol molecule right here. What's going to happen is the, al the entire alcohol group on the phosphate group is going to join with the hydrogen on the glycerol molecule, right? And that's going to be a condensation reaction. It's going to come down the water. And the oxygen right here is going to uh, form a phosphoester link. A phosphoester link uh, with the, the phosphorus atom here. And the reason we call it a phosphoester link is because if you change this to, uh, if you scratch this portion out right here, all right, and you just focused and you made this a carbon instead of a phosphorus. So let's pretend that's a carbon. You scribble that out. Let's pretend that's a carbon. Now, this group right in here is a carboxylic acid. If you ignore this part over here, this carbon double bonded to this oxygen and th this uh, um, alcohol group is a carboxylic acid. So if that reaction happens with a carbon instead of a phosphorus, that's called an ester link. So because the links are so similar and because this one involves a phosphorus instead of a carbon, we call it a phosphoester link. As where if it just involved the carbon, we would call it just an ester link. So anyway, you don't as you can see, this part that I scribbled out here is now relevant again. This here is an alcohol group that isn't used. It isn't touched yet. 
There's a phosphoester link that's joined over here, but this alcohol group is still good. It's untouched. So there's a link now made between the phosphate group here and the glycerol molecule. Now you need to make a link between the uh, myelinositol ring right here and the phosphate group. So the myelinositol, you can see, uh, right, it's going to be off the first one, is an alcohol group. So the same reaction again is going to happen. Um, the the say and now it's on the other side, okay? Um, and the entire alcohol group is going to come off of here to this hydrogen here, and this here again is going to form a phosphoester link with the phosphorus atom. It's not a carbon. I just put the carbon there to show uh, why they call it a phos uh, phosphoester link because if it was a carbon. Um, that's what we would call, we would call is an ester link. Uh, anyway, so now this down here is, uh, can you see it? There you go. All right, there we go. Uh, this is uh, phospholipase C. And if they don't specify the subgroup or, or, or uh, the, the, the subunit or the, or the family that it's in rather, uh, you can assume it to be the beta family. And the beta family contains four. So you have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4 of phospholipase C. And what that will do is it will cleave off um, the inositol ring above the phosphate group. So this phosphate is going to come down. This phosphate is going to come down into the cytoplasm of the cell. And it's going to be uh, myelinositol 145-triphosphate. Uh, so we're going to count the one now because it's in free form. It's in the cytoplasm of the cell. So this is myelinositol 145 triphosphate. So we have three phosphate groups on it. Um, how, how this phospho, phospholipase C uh, beta family gets activated, and that could either be through uh, uh, one through four, is through... Um, at heterotrimetric G protein, you see if you could see that there's a heterotrimetric G protein. So if all these three proteins, we have the alpha subunit, we have there the beta subunit and the gamma subunit, and I didn't draw it all out because it doesn't start in the on state. See, it's GD, GTP right there. That's guanosine tri phosphate and that's when it's in its on state it'll start in its off state and when it's in its off state it's bound to the beta subunit right there they're bound together when it's guanosine diphosphate it's in its off state and it'll be bound to the beta subunit right there and then we have the beta and the gamma and the gamma portion is what's bound to the phospholipid bilayer via lipid moiety. Um, so this is hetero. So that means all the proteins are different. And then tri, there's three, trimeric, and then the G, I don't know if I said this, but that the G stands for uh, guanosine nucle nucleotide. So we have uh, 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 hetero, trimetric, guanosine, nucleotide, linking protein is really what it stands for. And this particular alpha subunit, the family that it's in is alpha Q and the particular one is 11. And that's the one that phospholipase uh, C beta family will respond to, will become activated by. That's the one it will become activated by. This one here will become activated by this subunit right here because there's different families of of the uh, of the heterotrimetric G proteins there's different families and not all proteins are going to respond to it or react to it so it has to be this one the alpha Q11 now once the ligand binds this is a, a G coupled protein receptor. So it has a seven membrane spanning alpha helix. And we would term each one as uh, TM1. This would be TM1 right here, which is uh, 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 
I forget what that stands for, but it's TM1, and that's TM2, and that's TM3, and then these are the uh, extracellular um, looping domains. I think I think that's what they were called. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. So the ligand binds right there. Once the ligand binds, this uh, GDP gets knocked out gets cleaved out. It doesn't add a phosphate group. I want to specify that. It doesn't just simply add a phosphate group to guanosine diphosphate and make it guanosine triphosphate. It cleaves this out or hydrolyzes it, right? This is hydrolyzed out of the, the monomeric protein now because it's by itself. And GTP gets taken up from the cytoplasm. It's not by itself until GTP gets in there. But once GTP or guanosine triphosphate is in there, it's in its on state. GTP is in an on state. And when it's in its on state, it'll cleave away. That's when it cleaves away. So I'm sorry for any confusion right there, but that's when it'll cleave away from its beta and gamma subunits right there. So this uh, this is now like a, mon a, a G monomeric protein, like RAS, like RAS G monomeric protein. Um, but this is what's going to, this will, once it's in its on state, it also cleaves away from the G protein coupled receptors. And remember G protein coupled receptors, there's about 800 of them and they're grouped into five families. So this will cleave away and this will go over and activate phospholipase C. And then phospholipase C will go over here and cleave the, uh, this off. And this will drop down in the cytoplasm of the cell, which is myoinositol 145-triphosphate. And that will go to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. And that will be a ligand right there, which will actually release calcium. It's weird because calcium has to be there in order for calcium to be released. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself there because uh, I'm, I'm not even I'm not even going there right now. Uh, I just wanted to, sh to show this that this will go over there. Then once this re um, uh, activates phospholipase C. Phospholipase C will hydrolyze this back down to uh, guanosine diphosphate again. So it'll go back into its off state when it's GDP. It'll go back into its off state. And once it's in its off state, it'll go back and it'll bind back to its beta and gamma subunits. So that's the G pro, uh, the, the heterotrimetric G protein cycle right there. Is once it goes back to GDP, it'll go back and bind to its beta and gamma subunits. And remember, it's the gamma subunit that bounds to the uh, the um, the phospholipid bilayer via lipid moiety. And I'm Rich CNA. See you later.